I'll take that out and give this a little tap. Well, this is part three about how I converted my normal lathe to one to run with the cross slide on free moving linear ball races like this. Part three is specifically concerned with the preparations needed to machine the surfaces true, both sides for the two rails, true to each other, but also true to the spindle of the headstock of the lathe. Specifically, this rail has to be set accurately at right angles to the axis of this. So let's get on with it. So my task now is to take the top of the saddle, put it on the mill and machine it to take the rails. Now the machining that's necessary is quite simple. Basically when the rails are on here I need to drill and tap to be able to bolt the rail down onto the top of the saddle. But the trick is in the alignment. Taking the alignment off this edge of the dovetail isn't reliable because when you come to a point like this it's very hard to, to clock off it accurately and besides that it always gets some knocks and dings in it so it's not particularly accurate. The plan is when you've got a dovetail like this is you put something that's accurate and round and I've got these two pieces of carbide milling cutters that are measurably exactly the same diameter so I can clock off these two edges to align this in the mill in this direction because a small amount of misalignment here doesn't affect normal turning very much because the amount that the tool, the, cro the cross slide will move in and take the tool with it for the turning will be subject to what's known as a cosine error but for the tiny amount of misalignment that uh, we might be talking about that cosine error will be negligible. The most important reason for alignment of the rails being at right angles to the spin axis of the lathe when you're facing now if we look at it here this is the spin axis of the lathe say, coming out here if these were lined up perfectly true then we would machine a flat surface like so but if the rails were offset exaggerated angle uh, to this side then what would happen the tool would go in like so and because it's symmetrical it would be the other side if the rails were twisted the other way then the tool when it was machining that face would move in like this and because it's symmetrical we also have a face like that so we'd get a convex shape neither of these do we want the way to get accurate facing is to take great care with the alignment of these rails now the other way that needs alignment but uh, the other way where there could be an error is on these two surfaces uh, over the years they've been subject to a certain amount of wear and also the owner of the lathe before I had it fancied himself at doing a bit of scraping and he did some very bad scraping on these surfaces. It wouldn't have been necessary at all because uh, any wear that had taken place would have flattened it better than he could have scraping. So I'm not 100% certain how good these surfaces are so I intend to machine these flat in the same setting. I'll have to put this this way up in the mill so it'd have to rest on something on this side. Now these pieces which are the obvious ones to rest it on look as if they've only been rough machined 
uh, which is all that was necessary because accuracy was not too important on these because basically they're just there to take these pieces which fit under the bed of the, the lathe to stop this lifting up and at the far side there, there are two small ones on this side and one long one on this side so there's no guarantee that these surfaces will be accurate enough to sensibly form a reference for machining this so what I intend to do is to initially put this side face down in the mill and support these four corners with these one two three blocks they're called one two three blocks because they're one inch this way two inches this way and three inches this way but they're made quite uh, accurately if I mount this in the mill like so I'll take a very light cut just to true it up of those surfaces underneath that I said weren't necessarily going to be accurate and then I can put it back up this way and then just take a light skim off here. We should true everything up so I've got a nice flat true surface to bolt the rails onto. I'll transfer this to the mill and we'll have a look at the setup there. Well here it is, it's set up in the mill on four corners. It's on these one, two, three blocks as I described before. You can see two here and the other two are back here. The only alignment that was important was this way and this way. It didn't require any alignment in this direction. That won't be the case when it's turned up the other way. It's time to start up and get going. Well that's it. I've taken a very light cut off all these surfaces now what I found was very very true to the orientation of the top of the saddle however on this side this end was a little bit low compared to here but at the far end up here this was quite a bit high so this would not have been a very good reference now that it's been machined down. all of these surfaces will be coplanar and give a good reference for machining on the other side. I'll unclamp this, turn it upside down and see how we get on with the important part of the alignment. Well it's now been turned over and uh, very uh, loosely clamped down onto the bed of the mill. I say loosely because we need to tweak it a little bit to get in alignment. Uh, to get to close for the alignment in the beginning uh, fairly quickly I just use these calipers with a, a depth uh, end on and set off according to these two faces now I wouldn't trust that to be dead accurate but it set it up in a good place to start from uh, so it's, it's this um, indicator that we're going to use for the actual accurate setting up now the first thing to do here is to find the midpoint of our round bar well it's actually a milling cutter but it's the most accurate hard bars that I have here is to find the halfway point of that because to indicate along that line is the most accurate way now we can find the midpoint by moving this up and down and we're looking for the maximum reading on here higher readings are when the indicator moves clockwise. So here we found the maximum which will be the halfway point. I'll take that up to zero. Now when I move the table along so that this end is being indicated uh, when it's all set up it'll also read zero. So if you have to do this several times it can be quite tedious. I'll just hold that in with my finger. Okay, so this is this end is out nearly five thousandths of an inch. I'll take that out and give this a little tap. I can just feel it move, but not very much. 
think I've moved a couple of though, not quite enough, but we don't know what's happening on the other end. Well, it looks like I've gone too far, so I'll just come back a touch. Oh, that's looking good. Okay, so I need to know double check at the other end. Zero. Now to double check, we'll go back. So let's check again. Spot on zero. So we've got this aligned to perfection. Now what's necessary is to mill away this edge first of all, flatten both of these edges to make sure they're true and flat for bolting on the rails. After I machined this dovetail away, I thought just to be on the safe side, I ought to uh, check that it was still aligned true. It didn't really matter if this was out a bit because it's just got clearance on. But for when I drill and tap the holes mounting the slide, I want this to be as precise as possible. I wanted to check the alignment again, but I couldn't hear because I'd lost the uh, dovetail, which was the reference for when I put uh, these bars on here. But there was no reason why I couldn't check it on the back side. So I did that and it hadn't moved at all. It was absolutely spot on. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now the next stage is I just need to take a very, very small cut. Well, I hope it's going to be a small cut. Uh, on these two surfaces at exactly the same height uh, so that I've got uh, a flat and true surface to bolt the rail to. In order to have both sides at exactly the same height, I won't lift the tool. I'll come along to the end, go past, across and back down here without changing the height of the tool setting. Well, all that remains now is to uh, drill and tap for the screws for the rails. The rails are now bolted in place, so I'll fit the slide temporarily on here just to make sure that everything fits properly. The slide is now sitting on the rails and I must say it's got a really really smooth action. I'm looking forward to uh, trying this for real on the lathe. Well it's time for uh, lining up the rails onto the top part of the saddle. Now you recall when I machined uh, this top part of the saddle to take the rails I was very careful to get everything lined up as accurately as possible but there's still need for a final alignment because the rails are designed to be held down with four millimeter bolts but they actually have four and a half millimeter holes. I've got all the bolts are just in there loosely and you can see the amount of movement that's possible which is um, too much for which is more than I would find acceptable from the point of view of being able to face off in the lathe accurately and get a flat surface. That will ensure that when the cross slide moves across doing some facing that it will actually face flat. Step is to align this back rail to the front one. That should be easier because it would just be a question of measuring across at each end and then tightening the bolts. Well that's it for this video. Uh, we discussed briefly the alignment issues and uh, they're extremely important but they'll take more than this video to cover it so that will be the subject of the next video not only the alignment of the rails that we talked about here but also the alignment of this top surface come back next time see how it progresses that'll be the more interesting video because i'll show various techniques for alignment that uh, uh, some people wouldn't have seen before. If you uh, like this video or any of the others, please share, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates of any other videos. Thanks for watching.